you kidding me? That we ended up. Well, I shouldn't say I took a wrong turn. I took a detour. Vegas. I've never, I've never seen. I guess I've never seen a cruise ship up close. They're massive. Let's get up here and get a better view of this thing. I had no idea. I mean, I've seen them on TV. They're obviously they're big. But this is like a. This is bigger than like the biggest hotel I've ever seen. Are you kidding? MSC Seashore. How many floors are right on that thing? Um. I, I I think I don't think I'm supposed to go this way. Over there. There's no. I can just stop here somewhere for a minute. Um. Crew, uh, this is crew pick up and drop off parking here. I'm just gonna cheat right here for a second. That's oh my god, no way. You know what's up there? <laughs> Hang on, stay. You stay for that girl. This is not. I don't know how many. I don't know how many, like living quarters, or dot or below. But above, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve decks, and then the top. And then from what I can see up top is, um, uh, well, there's like the navigation. This is where the pilot, you know, the captain is. But back here, there's some things like this, at a water park. I'm sure there's a big swimming pool and all that stuff up there. I've never seen one up close before and there's another one way out there in the distance i know that's hard to see with this camera that's just crazy that's that's just crazy wow <laughs> all right i have no desire to go on a cruise no I think I've watched too many shipwreck movies. Oh, and I think that's the terminal. Yeah, it says on that building over there. It's the Disney, the T Disney Cruise Line. Uh, so that this is a different terminal. The Disney boat must be out. Now I seen there was one over there, but it's kind of hidden because of parking garages and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy. All right, here's another one, and they they are hard to, hard to get a complete view of uh, this on the terminal here area anyway, because because uh, parking garages. Did they have this? That somebody's up there jogging, okay, jogging a big running track all by the whole way around. A huge observation uh, deck up there. And big giant tall windows. That's, this is, I don't know which one this is. It's a, it's not near as big as the other one is, but still, still massive. Yep, never seen them up this close before. Yeah, I don't I just like the idea of being, I don't know. Honestly, I'd rather fly than be on a boat. Because boats sink and, um, uh, airplanes, they only fall out of skies. So, there's that. <laughs> Why I would rather fall out of the sky than sink than a fear of drowning, I guess. Alright. Let's go on down the road here. I think I might know a place new boondocking spot. Possibly. Maybe it's just a day use area, but we're gonna go have a quick look at it. And where we are exactly, uh, all I can tell you is it's the merit. Merritt Island and Cape Canaveral, uh, part of Florida. Uh, that's, that's where we're at. You can keep a track where we're at. You've been watching the, watching the GPS thing here. All right, we're going across the drawbridge. I think this is where the ocean waters, uh, right down there is like a lock and dam. So this bay, uh, or in it, we should have went around where all those used boats, all those boats are dry docked over there. <laughs> no, uh, no, 
No. But that bay, that's as far as like the ocean waters come inland. And then that dock, um, that lock and dam up there is what separates it from the river. I forget what that river is called now up here. So up here, just a little further, it, well, it's certainly a day use area. I hope I don't get the car stuck. It's a little rough going, but uh, somebody told me they seen RVs kind of tucked away in the trees. <laughs> so we're gonna check that out. Um, definitely a place just to come hang out and uh, go fishing. There's beach right here. Oh look, there's cars back in there. My spot there tucked away. Uh, that would be a good camping spot. Get them cars out of there. I can back my RV right back in there. I'll be amongst the palms and uh, waterfront. Yeah, I can't go forward anymore here. Because they're about as far <laughs> forward. The rest of that is real loose sand. So I can't go that way. That's all loose sand. We have to back up and then... Uh, kind of go over through that way. Yeah, that's as far as we go here. Boy, I see a bunch of old boats out there. All right, going back out along the highway where we came in at. And see what's going on over here. If this is more of a through road along the beach with more spots available, or just another dead end kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's kind of a dead end. Yeah, people uh, picnicking, tailgating. With the, backs of their vehicles open and getting fishing poles off. These people over here are having a, you got like a little campsite. They have a, a tarp. Uh, I wonder if they're staying here a little bit longer. They have an Uber sign in the window. The generic little tent thing there for some shelter. It looks like they have a picnic thing kind of set up. A little mini day camp sort of. Who knows, maybe they stay longer than that. We're gonna go a little further. A little further down, see what we find. Somebody's in a van. I wonder if they get away with. You know what? I have not seen any sign saying no overnight camping yet. 150 minimum dollar fine for littering. They're just tailgating. They got the back doors of the van open, sitting out on some lawn chairs. A bunch of sailboats moored out there. Oh, here's another van. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they've been getting away with, uh, I shouldn't say getting away with, maybe it's just perfectly allowed. I, mean, I guess if you got a fishing pole out, yeah, there is a technicality <laughs> in some places. You're allowed to fish, oh, you know, night fish. I guess if you got it, it doesn't look like you've got camp set up if you're just happen to have your RV down here but you got fishing stuff out that can be the difference I wonder if this goes under the bridge up here because we're almost at a dead end doesn't yeah, I don't know if this is safe for vehicles or not Ooh, I think it is well I don't know if I take my RV under here it looks like there's plenty of clearance <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't take the RV dot back here. That's kind of iffy. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah, this is like truck territory. I'm just easing through here with the Fiesta. I think it gets better up around here. Boy, I can imagine the RV things in the things in the cupboards would be banging around. I think the clearance was high enough, but you'd have to come through this really bumpy area. Yeah, I think it's smooth again. There it comes suddenly on our jet ski. Comes somebody on our jet ski. So once we go across the bridge, I think we have kind of the same exact thing on the other end. There's access, fishing access down here, down the, you know, places to park and go fishing. What a great area though. Come hang out the water, go fishing. Hmm. Hmm. There's 
some more great uh, pull off area a little further up the road here. Dang it, I bet they're having a, looks like a family reunion. There's a whole group of people here. Attention voters, this regulatory zone, the, the regulatory zone in this area is manatee zone. Slow speed, minimum lake within 1,000 feet of shore. So uh, careful of the manatee voters. I don't think we're gonna go back here very far. I think this just dead ends. So we're just gonna have a we're just, just gonna have a quick look and see. It's easy enough to uh, take kayaks or these wind sails or whatever we call them. Like uh, surfboards with sails. There's a nice little spot there. And there's a nice little spot here. <laughs> it's ours. Wow. Huh. I know that, 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 that. Ah, no, no, get, get out of there. Come on, come on. No. Better come. Get out of there. Come on. That should be getting too wet. You're gonna get back in the car. Good guy have seat covers. I didn't bring a towel. Dang it, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know if got a little wet. So these couple people out here have them. It's like a surfboard with a sail on it. I guess they're playing around giving it a try. Another jet ski over there. I don't know, being by the waters, you can see how the you know the boat idea is kind of appealing. You know, if I lived in Florida, I probably would own a boat. You know, some little, some little thing. Come on, get out of there. Come on, come on. Yeah, it'd be nice to park the RV. I could kind of come in and park sideways here in my front yard. Sand, set up some lawn chairs, fish. You know, I don't know. Seems, uh, seems doable. Doesn't seem like a bad time. Uh, doesn't seem like a bad idea. Come on, this way. Better come. Better come. Come on. Go for a ride in the car. Beep. Good, you stayed on the passenger side <laughs> with those wet paws. Huh? Florida just sounds great, right? In the wintertime. I don't know about the Florida heat. What do what people do in the summertime that have boats? You know, a lot of those open but Yeah, you know, it gets too hot. Yeah, maybe go out in the morning or in the evening. You know, the heat of the day. On a, you know, it's a houseboat, you could have a generator or an air conditioner, or uh, any of the bigger boats that have living quarters, I'm sure, have uh, generators and air conditioners. Hmm. Yeah, see, they got the right idea. What a great place to come hang out for the day, anyhow. Huh? Well, it was kind of nice to go adventuring off-road a little bit and not get the Fiesta stuck. <laughs> There's always a danger when you're messing around in the loose sand areas. We was careful though. All right. I think we'll start heading back maybe. And uh, get back to the RV. I'm guessing, you know, people who live in Florida have well, you know, adjusted to the heat. I mean, not necessarily the, you know, the really hot spells, but uh, in general, the Florida summer heat. Probably out when you're out in the water in a boat anyway. Uh, even if you're docked, you know, when you're out near the water, the usually a breeze, uh, pretty good breeze off the ocean. So, um, you know, on hot days, yeah, sure, it'd be hot, but with a nice breeze, it, you know, it just that's, it would be tolerable, I suppose. I have to go run into the air conditioner just because it's a little warm out, right? Uh, huh. And on just the extreme heat days when there's a really hot spell, uh, well, I don't know. If you don't have an air conditioner in your boat, then just go home. <laughs> you know, go to your house or apartment and say, it's just too hot to boat out today. Tell you what, there is no shortage of rental places, like e-bike rentals and 
and uh, there's Cracker's Island Grill. Yeah, Beachside Grill. Uh, there's a place back there that said Prime Rib uh, Special. And it was just like a little, it was just like a little uh, place too. Little beach uh, bar and grills. But this, uh, oh, I can just smell food in the air. Oh, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Oh, how's this um, Papa Vito's Italian restaurant and pizza. I tell you, I could go for a big plate of spaghetti and meatballs, garlic bread, a salad. Mmm. Look at this old Volvo sitting here. <laughs> Just, uh, had to stop and admire the classic old Volvo. <laughs> I like that.